Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and today we're going to be looking at a puzzle called Nine Arrows, and I will get to that now. In a couple of days' time, we're going to be bringing you uh, Patreons, the new, it's the Labours of Hercules pack by Panthera, Aspartagus, and Piotr V. It's brilliant. It's it's pretty tough. There are 12 labors, but you can only you can get through three of them to to win a prize. Um, and you can even select the three you, you pick to an extent. So um, I think that is a real opportunity to have a go at a very interesting puzzle pack. And uh, I'm so pleased with it. it it's really good. It's got brilliant artwork stories um, that you may know in some ways, but uh, it's absolute class, and we're looking forward to bringing you that now. That will also, well, tomorrow will mark the deadline on our Another Language competition, where Shy and Jovial's classic puzzle has to be explained by you. Um, and we have had some great entries to that, so very well done to people who have written in. Um, that's really asking you to go above and beyond. Um, yeah, very impressed with everybody who's tried to do that. Of course, we have the Kickstarter on, on underway. Do check it out on the link under the video and uh, pledge to buy the book if you haven't already. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be more than worth it. It's going to be brilliant. And uh, we're really looking forward to putting that together. What else is going on? We've got... Um, uh, we've got the crossword event coming up on uh, November the 17th with Jack Fox. We're looking forward to that. Um, John Halpin will be teaching us how to create a cryptic crossword. Uh, if you join his channel and if subscribe to his channel, and uh, that'll keep you updated there. Again, there's a link under the video. Um, and all of our apps, of course. You can check them out on the apps link under the video, as well as our merchandise. Still best reach from the link in the description field rather than from the store page of YouTube. So loads going on as always. And uh, this puzzle is very interesting. It's basically an arrow Sudoku, but there are two tiny wrinkles. No, there are three tiny wrinkles, and one of them's probably quite significant. So. Normal Sudoku rules apply. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules means once nine in every row, column, and three by three box. Identical digits. No, there are four wrinkles, and I, here's the one I will forget as we go along. There's a knight's move constraint. So identical digits cannot be a knight's move apart. So those two couldn't be the same thing. Um, digits along the indicated diagonal sum to the indicated number. So this diagonal adds up to 55. Now, sometimes this says can include repeat digits. It must do because it wouldn't add up to 55 if they were all different. Um, digits in the cage sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. So those four add up to 30. And here we go. Digits along an arrow sum to the number in the circle. So these five digits add up to that. Now, again, repeats are possible along arrows. But here's the kicker. The numbers in the circles of the arrows are all different. And we're told in the title there are nine arrows. So that must be a set of the numbers one to nine, which is an unusual rule in an arrow Sudoku. So do give it a try on the link under the video. I don't know how hard this puzzle is. You can check the video length. I am going to start now, so let's get cracking. Um, okay, well, the long arrow is definitely helpful. There are three cells in box five on it and two in box two. And the minimum three digits in box five must be one, two, three. The minimum in box two must be one and two. And that already adds up to nine, which is the maximum Sudoku digit. So we found the nine arrow instantly. Now, knight's move. I'm not going to forget the knight's move this puzzle, he said, in inaccurately. But I can see that though that one two pair, they both see one of the cells on this arrow in box five, by which I mean that let's just color them yellow and look at this cell. If this was a one or a two, well, it would keep a one out of both of those cells by Sudoku and Knight's move, and it would keep a two out of both of them by Sudoku or Knight's move. So. And that's not possible. Clearly, that is a one-two pair. They both see that cell, so that must be where the three goes in the central box. And we've got 
a central digit. That's three in the spotlight, in the middle of the puzzle. Uh, this digit I'm in here must be four or five, because we can't go above eight in that circle. Ah, up here as well. Doesn't there have to be a three in this? It's either, yes, again, the circle can't be nine. And the minimum for these two, given that there's a one, two pair in the box, is a three, four pair. So it's either three, four or three, five. And this adds up to seven or eight. That's a partner with that one in a way. One is seven and one is eight. But there's definitely a three here. There's a knight's move restriction from there, so we can put the three in. And we have exactly the same arrow situation going on. So we know that that's a four or five pair of different um, of different numbers. That's actually going to put this digit in one of those two, but I don't know which one. So, ah, oh, hang on. What do I know about this? So we've used nine, eight, and seven in the circles once we sort out that amb ambiguity. The highest this can be is six, but this digit here has to be, again, at least a four, because one, two, three have been used up. So if we can't go above six, we can put four or five in there and five or six in here. Oh, and of course, the one and two in these circles, I think they've got to be on these two arrows because all of these other arrows are adding at least two cells. So those are the one and two in some order and on their arrows. Right, this now can't be the one that adds up to three because you can't put two and one in there because of that cell. And here you can't put two and one in there because of, well, either of those cells. So the three in the circle is up here and we've got another one, two pair. So this is quite good progress for once. Um, probably going to have to start colouring the one, two pairs. Now, remaining arrows are four, five or six. So I've got a triple there. Other cells in this column are seven, eight or nine. Um, oh, look, right, that's interesting. This can't be a five. Oh, that's very lovely, actually. This can't be a five because this would be a four and this would therefore be a five, but it can't be because of the knight's move constraint. So that is a six. Right, so we're left with a four, five pair. I wonder if we can disambiguate those. Oh, I'll tell you what. That, oh no, I was going to say they're looking at that cell, um, but they're not necessarily different, so hold your horses. Anyway, the four fives must be made up of numbers that are less than five. That can't be a three. Okay, it's time to colour the ones and twos. So I'm going to go purple and green. Let's just start up here. Purple there, green in the same box. This is in the same column as purple, so it's green. This is in the same box as green, so it's purple. This is in the same column as purple, so it's green. That's on the same arrow as green, so it's green. This is in the same row as green, so it's purple. That's on the same arrow, so it's purple. Now... This cell sees both green and purple and is not one or two. So I think this one has to be one or two accordingly. It can't be three or four, would be at a much too high a level. So that is purple. This cell does see green and purple, although not the... I was looking at those two before. It's not because of that that it can't be one or two. It's because of those two. So that's three or four. This is one or two and is green. And now we've got a real start. Surely we can finish off... Hmm, maybe. Green is in one of those two cells. Ah, purple is not going to be in the 30 cage, which contains six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm sure you knew that. So purple goes there. Purple can't be here or here now, so in row four we've got it. It's That means we can determine the purple and green up in the corner. Oh, bother. And we're left with an X-wing on greens. 
that's purple. We're finished with purples. They're all done. And we're left with an X-wing on greens. Right. Now I want to think about... Yes, that's lovely. I've just thought of how, how I can get both of these digits, which, which is very clever, actually. Whichever one of these is a four, well, that must have a three in the next digit to it. However, that same one must also have a one in the colored cell. And that means that the other colored cell on the five arrow is a two. And in that case, there's a three in this cell as well. So in fact, both of those are threes. Now maybe we can finish off threes, I wonder. No, and maybe we can't. Um, oh, there's a three in one of those two. So three in one of these two, along with one or two, whichever green is. Not up here. That's got to be a three. Oh, well, that's fixed our, our, that's fixed our greens. These two are now not the green cell. The green cell is here. I don't know whether it is one or two, but it is there. And that's all the greens and purples done, thanks to this three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion and really helping the puzzle solve as well. Now, it hasn't resolved which of these is four or five. Oh, and I'm wondering if I'm going to have to start colouring fours and fives now. I have a feeling this theme might even continue through the puzzle. But I don't know. It's, I mean, I can... Oh, yes. OK, let's start here. Let's go orange and blue this time. So blue there, orange there, blue in the same column. Now, let's use the rule that the circles have to be different digits, and that becomes orange. So we're going to get an orange out there somewhere. We're going to get a blue up there somewhere. Oh, this may be a lot less clean and clear. Ah, no, that's lovely. The positions for those possible orange in box four, they both see these cells. This is one of the wonderful things about Knight's move, is that whichever of these is orange, neither of these can be orange. If that's orange, it sees that cell on the vertical and that cell on the knight's move. If that's orange, it sees that cell on the vertical and that on the knight's move. Neither of those can be orange. So orange, which is four and five, therefore not in the 30 cage, is down here. And that means this is orange. It sees that by knight's move. That's orange. It sees... Those two would see each other by night's move. Then we get an orange in one of those two cells. This has been much more helpful than I was expecting. Orange, oh, in one of these two, along with blue. So they're a four, five pair, weirdly. And orange is now forming an X-wing there. So the orange here is in one of those two. But it can't be here because it would see whichever those whichever of those is orange by night's move. So that's orange, and that's orange, and this one isn't. And let's fill in four, five. So I'm left again, well, I cleared up the X-wing in green, but I'm left with an orange X-wing. I haven't got very far with blue yet. Blue in this box is in one of those two. I suppose, again, that can't be blue in the same way as it can't be orange because that cell sees both of these but and that can't be blue for the same reason oh that is blue i hadn't yes that is blue so that sees all of those so blue in this box is in one of those two it's getting a bit strange now Can I not go further with blue? Yes, I can. Hang on. Blue must be in one of those two cells in this box because it can't be in the 30 cage. So there's a blue in one of those two. That's now not blue. So that is... Oh, and that doesn't resolve these two. Ah! Oh, that's very weird. I thought it definitely would. Am I missing something? Not necessarily. 
So I'm a bit stuck with the blues now. And I don't think I've got anywhere nearer disambiguating them at all. I have a feeling the disambiguation is going to end up on this column. So I'm going to have to look at 6, 7, 8, 9. So in the central box, 6, 7, 8, 9 are in those cells. Oh, I'm going to have to plant. Oh, look, 6 is in one of these two cells in box 2. Therefore, it's not in those two. Therefore, it's in one of these two. And there. Now. Mm, six being in one of those two means these two can't contain six. Why do I say that? Well, if there was a six there, it sees both of those cells, one on the knight's move. And if there was a six there, it sees both of them again. So six in column three is up here somewhere, which doesn't resolve these. Unless, can I prove that's not a six? No, not obviously. These are from 7, 8, 9. Ah, this one must be there in the 30 cage because this cell sees all of those, including the knight's move. So I'm going in for a new colour now. Let's go dark grey. And that's the same as that, not a 6, therefore, because it can't be a 6 here. Oh, and this cell is the same as that, so we're up to yellow now. Um, that ah so six is now in one of these two and one of those two ah and they see both of these cells so six in box six is up there somewhere in one of those strange puzzle Those two positions for six both see that cell. Oh, and these two both see that. Ah, right. Sorry. These two positions see both of those cells, so they can't be six. So I'm now looking at where can six go in column eight. It can't go in those two because of that pair. It can't go there because of this weird pair of six. Pos no, I'm wrong. That six allows a six there. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I do sometimes get a bit carried away with the old knight's move restriction and see um, impossibilities that don't exist except in my own brain. So I have to watch out for that. Now what's blue? Blue is four or five. Oh, man, I'm going to have to colour these final colours. I probably am. So strange. Right, let's make this one red. I'm out of colours now, if I'm going to continue to use light. Well, I could use black. Anyway, purple and red, they're over here. Ah, that one, sorry, grey and red are over here. But that one sees that by night's move. So that's grey, that's red. And then these two are grey and red. What is nine? Nine is not red. I don't, that's not all that powerful. Nine could still be grey, yellow, or, well, it can't be six, obviously. That's a weird thing to say. Um, or a knowledge bomb, depending how you look at it. Oh, come on. If that's six, that must be six. That must be six. I don't know, I was so sure they were looking at that cell. That's foolish of me. Four, five, one, two, three. So these are the seven, eight, oh, seven, eight, nine are red, gray, and yellow. Okay, so these are gray and yellow in some order. Um, but they don't see any. This is red or yellow, I suppose. No, it could be. Yes, it can't be blue four five. 
Red's in one of those two cells. That's slightly interesting. Red's in one of those two cells, so that can't be red. So then red's in one of these two cells, and it must be in one of those two. And now nine can't be red. Um, which is a fact I have learnt now. That's slightly surprising. Maybe maybe that was available before. But anyway, nine can't be red. It's in one of those two red. Obviously in one of these two. I mean, that's not really adding anything. Um, that can't be red. Okay, that can't be yellow or grey. Or red. So it's not 7, 8 or 9. It can't be 6 or 3 or 1 or 2 or orange. So it's the other colour of 4, 5. It is blue. Gosh, is this what you need to do to get to this puzzle? So that's not blue. Doesn't necessarily make it six, although it makes it a bit more likely that it is. One of those is blue. We've got blue here, though. Wow, I think I can place blue in row two. Because those positions for blue mean blue can't be there. And the only position for blue left is here. So that is blue, and that's not. Blue is four or five. Um, now blue must be in these three cells, so that's not blue, that's orange. That's blue. Blue can't be there. Blue's in one of those two. The only position for blue in column three... Sorry, that was a terrible attempt to highlight column three, is here. So that is blue, and that's not and that sees that cell, which is therefore not blue, so that one won't be blue either. And these two will be, and that is going to fix threes. They're all four or five. Three is here now in this little two by two, and here, which is therefore not red. Oh, I love how this works out. It is so... Um, beautiful with the colouring and how it sorts itself out. So red is seven or eight. This is red now. Ah, oh, that doesn't fix these. Maybe it does some other way. This is red. So those aren't red. Red's now in one of those two. And that's so strange. I thought reds or sixes would be fixed. I haven't got one of the one two colors here green i haven't re filled in green don't oh, there it is green right oh no that doesn't do anything for red does it do something for six six is in one of those cells hmm i don't think it quite does oh, i'm gonna have to get to this diagonal in a moment so, I'd like to sort out sevens, eights, nines, maybe even sixes a bit more first. So, what have we got for six? Ah, those two sixes say it's not in those two, don't they? So, six is in one of those three positions. Well, maybe let's look at it. If six was there, that would be six, that would be six. You could put all the sixes in the grid there, there, and there. That would be all the positions for six based on row two, column three. But that is quite a powerful one because it fixes six both in box two and four. So maybe that is not what I should be looking at. Hmm. Right, this nine, can it be dark grey or yellow? Well, it is, I think. It's not red and it's not six. So it's not either of those cells. Oh, that's quite interesting. So I could take nine out of those. So red, sorry, nine is 
dark grey or yellow. But which one? Right. Dark grey, dark grey. So yellow must be over this side of box 5 and over this side of box 2. So this is a pair of 6 and yellow. So that can't be 6 or yellow. It certainly can't be yellow. But this can be. That's the frustration here. I can't quite see. Ah, oh, look, in this column, where does dark grey go? Which is doesn't matter what it is. It's 7, 8 or 9. It cannot go here because that would see both of the positions for dark grey there. Right. I think that's really good. So that dark grey goes there. That's fixing 6. That's exactly where I wanted 6 to be. So we can finish off the 6s in the grid. We've worked this out a moment ago. That can't be 6. That's 6. That's 6. OK, so let's remove six pencil marks from lots of cells and, and we can put six in here actually as well, which I hadn't realized, and it gets no color. So this is yellow. Sorry about my pinging phone. Um, this is yellow, obviously that six gets no color. This is yellow. Now that hasn't sorted out all the yellows, although I bet it has. Oh gosh, it's making me think there's nowhere yellow can go in this box. Of course there is, it can be nine. Yellow is nine. Right, and I think this is gonna mean that we're awfully close to finishing off. Yellow is going to be in one of those two cells. It's another X-wing with yellows there. So that's yellow. Um, those are the uh, so yellow in box whatever this is. Box six is there. Right. That's all the yellows done. Now it's reds. That's red. This one isn't grey. That's red. This one isn't red. It's grey. That's grey. Red is up here with, oh no, hang on, it could be there. No, it's not, because that's not a six. Oh, sorry, that's not a color, it is a six. That's red, so that's not red. So this is a yellow-red combo. That's got no color because it's six, so that's orange. I should have worked that out. Um, and I'm left with these... What's this? This is seven or eight. Can't do the yellows. Greys? Oh look, one of these two is grey. So I've got rid of all the light grey once I fix these two. Like that. That is grey. So I've got a few cells left to resolve. And of course it's the diagonal now. Right, let's just mark up the cells I've done. So red is seven or eight. Gray is also seven or eight. Um, gray can't be nine because we've had nine in yellow. So in fact, let's color yellow. Ooh, okay, just be careful about those. Oh, sorry, I've made a, one mistake in the nines in that I took nine out of those cells, but one is yellow. So. Right, now I'm going to look at this diagonal, and I think we might be able to draw a conclusion. Let's try and add it up. So, the digits we've already got written in add up to 9, 12, 15. Now, we've got different colours of 7 and 8 twice. We've got red, grey, red, grey. So that's one flavour each of 7 and 8. So both pairs add up to 15. We had 15, plus 15, plus 15. We've got to 45, which is not a secret number in this case. We're left with two cells that add up to the difference between 55 and 45. These two cells add up to 10. This one is not a 7. It's either an 8-2 pair or a 9-1 pair. 
And I have to say, I'm left... I think uniqueness is telling me that it can't be a 9-1 pair. Or I might not be able to resolve all the others. I think something will go wrong on the arrows if it's 8-2. So if it's 8-2, dark grey is 8 and green is 2. Okay, let's take that through orange. If green was 2, orange is 5. But if orange is 5, red is 8, not dark grey. So this can't be 8 and 2. That's lovely, actually. So it's 9 and 1. This is a 9, so it's yellow. So we can finish off yellows. And just these two cells to colour properly. And now I can apply the magic of Sven's Sudoku pad by highlighting each group of cells. So I worked out on the diagonal, I needed that and that to add to 10. So green becomes one. I highlight them all and hit one. Uh, purple therefore becomes two. I highlight them all and hit two. Um, I've got this arrow, so orange becomes four. I highlight them all and hit four. That means blue is five. That means I've got this arrow making red seven. That means dark grey is eight. I've even got this arrow to prove it. And yellow is nine. And I've got one cell left to fill in the corner. And there we go. What a brilliant puzzle. That is a colouring massive. Um, Simon would have loved that too, but I enjoyed it just as much. Most entertaining, very rainbow-like. Um, ended up not colouring only threes and sixes, so I just had a good number of colours without going into the extra palettes. So many thanks to Sven for creating a brilliant web app, and do think about helping him out with that on his Patreon. Um, and many thanks to Henrik Jakobsen for sending this lovely puzzle. Hope you had a go at it, um, and I hope you got it. Very well done if you did. Thank you for watching, as always, on the channel, and bye for now. Music